Hey everybody, I'm Asian Funk. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm joined by Antonio Romero Montero from Texas. He is the Guinness Book of World Records holder for having the largest video game collection on record. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Mark. Happy to be here. I'm excited to participate in your channel. Oh, thank you. Well, last year you had, it was recorded that you had over 20,000 video games. How many video games do you have in your collection now? So I'm getting very close to 22,000 right now. Have you played all of those games? <laughs> It'd require a couple lifetimes to do so, so unfortunately not. Okay. Uh, I guess I should probably start with like, where did your uh, interest in collecting video games start? So it really started when I was a young kid. Um, again, first tried Atari, really, really young age, and uh, yeah, I wasn't too much into that. What really hooked me was right when I started the Genesis. That was the system that got me hooked into video games. Mm -hmm. And from there, the passion just grew. And the more I played, the more I loved it, and the more I wanted to keep playing. And it ended up uh, probably turning into a little bit of a mania, but <laughs> uh, I guess it's a passion for sure. I guess like at your peak, how many games were you buying? Like once you decided that you were gonna start collecting for real, were you buying like a ton every week, every month? Yeah, no, I did have some, definitely some peak buying periods. And uh, in those peaks, I would probably buy close to 500 or more games a month, if not more. Um, it'd be funny because uh, a lot of my purchases I do over the mail and I would have the mailman just leave the boxes of the mail, the, you know, the big carton boxes, yep. two or three of those in front of my door almost daily. And the wife would just look at me, shake her head, and I'd just take them in, have some fun. So I guess the mailman knew you pretty well then. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he, he figured out there's something weird there. Yeah, because a lot of stuff coming into the house. That's pretty funny. Um, I read in an article that you have one game that's worth between $500 and $700. Is that true? I got some that are in that range. I got some that are even higher range. What, what are uh, some examples of a game that's worth that much and what makes it so valuable? It all comes down to uh, rarity. And I'm sure you know that. Uh, I understand you're a big comic guy, right? Yep. So some of the more rare stuff, harder find, key artists, that kind of stuff. Um, really mm. drives the price of video games as well. And, and it's the same thing. Um, some of the rare stuff I got, and actually a recent acquisition, um, uh, Magic Chase for Turbo Graphics. That's uh, one of the rarest games out there for uh, uh, North American collection. Um, got a couple rare ones. I mean, I have complete collections of almost every system in the North America region. So in every one of those collections, there's always some that are very rare, some that are extremely rare. I see. And what is it about when you're looking for a game uh, that's missing in your collection? What do you look for in terms of like quality? Like, are you, um, do you only care about getting the game or do you care about having it in a nice box? Or what, what is it that you look for? That what, what, what makes you decide that this is the one to buy besides the fact that it's the title? It's a combination, and I've kind of developed my own criteria based on uh, each different uh, system. Mm -hmm. So my basic rule of thumb is uh, if it's in a plastic case, a jewel case, or something um, that's, that'll hold its shape, I like to get it as complete as possible and to make condition as possible. Um, but some of the paper boxes, I really try to shy away from those for the most part. Um, because they don't hold too well with age. Um, they're a little bit harder to maintain. Um, and then I've also had to make some choices on spacing because I'm pretty much uh, out of space as far as my <laughs> location for holding my collection. Yeah, it, it seems like you collect more than just video games. I see some, uh, some Wii uh, characters back there. Yeah, I got the whole library of Amiibo. I'll try to rotate a little bit. Yeah. Is that um, something that you're getting into in terms of collecting or is that just a side hobby? Yeah, just a little side hobby. Um, it's part of, the, I guess, the whole video game components. Um, it really started with these guys. So um, they really got into Toys to Life, especially the first Skylanders game. Mm -hmm. And it was fun um, helping them collect and find all the characters for that. And it kind of just evolved. Um, 
probably too many Skylanders here in the household, wouldn't you say? <laughs> sure. And then uh, when the Amiibos came out, because of the Mario and the Nintendo, it just yep. was the right combination. But uh, yeah, it's, it's fun collecting those as well. Yeah, that's cool. Do you, um, when you go game hunting, sorry, my cat's in the background in case you're hearing him meowing. Um, when you are going out and looking for a game, uh, do you involve like your kids and your family or is it just kind of like just you going out there and getting it? If you're, if you're going out there physically, do you try to make it like a, an event, like a family activity or something? It, it depends. Um, so for, for current gen stuff, yeah, I, I get them involved. They'll come to, with me and we'll go local shopping and so forth. But for um, retro older stuff, um, unfortunately, especially as in depth as I am in collecting, it becomes very, very hard to find some of this stuff locally. Mm -hmm. Really, I probably wouldn't have achieved this collection if it weren't for online purchasing and, and the facilities that we have nowadays with the internet. It's just, there's, it's very hard to find some titles. Yeah. Cause I'm, I'm assuming you, a lot of your games are from Japan. Is that right? Um, no, I actually around 90, 95% of my collection are from the U S. Oh, okay. Um, only, I only have about a thousand to 2000 games from Japan. Roughly. What makes you decide that it's a game that you want to buy from Japan? Is it, uh, is it because it, that it's the only title that's made there and they don't have an American version? Really my Japan collection, it's at its infancy. So oh, okay. it's been more than anything, um, just buying stuff that I'm missing as far as what I find. Um, mm. But there are a couple, couple of components that I really went after particularly. So one of the coolest components from the Japan collection that I have that was really something I've always wanted to get and finally broke out and got it was for the Nintendo 64, um, they came out with a cartridge system, uh, like a tape system in Japan. Um, it was called the Nintendo 64 DD. Never oh, came yeah, out yeah. in the U.S. in any other spots. But, you know, I always remember seeing that as a, you know, young age in magazines. Of, ooh, and I finally broke out. And those I went particularly after to get those. Beyond that, really, my Japan collection was just as I found stuff, slowly getting them. Mm -hmm. I've been teasing the wife about a trip to Japan for a while now. But I oh, think yeah. she gets afraid I might end up uh, having a container shipped back or something. <laughs> yeah that's funny um japan is definitely on my bucket list just in terms of just visiting but also because of like the video game history over there um yeah you'll definitely have to do the mario kart thing that they do where they actually let you drive go-karts in the in the outfits um you know, for that? Uh, if mama lets us. <laughs> yeah so i see you're wearing an e3 hat uh i saw on your youtube channel that you went to e3 for the first time last year is that right Yes, yes, that was one of those dream come true events as well. And I really got to thank the folks at Konami. Actually, they were the ones that invited me to come and visit it. Um, so I'll, I'll share that story with you. So, uh, you know, a little bit after the, the, the Guinness record came out and the, some of the videos came out related to it, Konami contacted me because what I, my favorite game of all times is Castlevania IV. Oh, okay. From Konami. Okay. So they saw that and they were very excited about it. And uh, they wanted to talk with me and just uh, collaborate a little bit. So I was very excited to get with them and so forth. And as we're getting closer to E3, you know, they invited me if I'd like to go. And I said, absolutely, would love to. Yeah. So I juggled my work life around, my family life, everything around. And then the, a one day, full stint into a three ran as much as i could up and down oh had a blast had a blast oh you're only there for one day one day that's all i could spend unfortunately because i had some other work commitments that i couldn't get out oh of. man well so I, I flew in slept woke up early hit e3 first spent that full day to the max by 8 8 9 p.m i was making my way to the airport and i had to fly back wow that is incredible <laughs> i don't I, I, I'm assuming that they let you get to the front of the lines for some of those uh, because I, I volunteered at E3 before and I can tell you it takes forever to do anything. Like if you want to try and play a game, if it's a really popular game, there is no way you're going to be able to do that in like an hour, you know, without waiting forever. So I hope, I hope they gave you some perks when you were there. 
No, they, listen, I got again, thank Konami for everything. They managed to get me in right early with the, the first batch um, with the media type group. So I had mm. a little bit of early time in to do some of the activities and play some of the early games. Again, I can't say enough. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm really glad you got to go, especially oh, since that's not happening this year. So um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, can you tell me a little bit about your Guinness uh, World Record experience? Just kind of like how, what made you decide to go after the record? You know, how did you even start to take it seriously? Can you just talk a little bit about that? Sure. So as my collection was starting to grow really, really, really big, um, I saw the Guinness World Record um, holder come out at the time. Uh -huh. And it really excited me and say, you know what? I could probably beat that record. And I didn't have as many actually as the record holder at the time, but it almost felt like a challenge to say that to beat it. Mm -hmm. So I kept on building up my collection until the point that uh, it was there. And then came the whole application process. And I got to tell you, that's a lot of work. The whole Guinness verification process was a lot of work. Um, I had two video game industry experts here in my home for about seven, eight days straight uh, oh, wow. counting the games. And each had to do their account independently. And both of them had to be filmed at all times while they're counting as a verification that they counted as well. So I printed out all the inventory of my collection and everything, and they went through and marked it all up. They counted it, validated it. Um, you know, there's always some games that, you know, they came up, oh, I can't find this one, and I had to go through and hunt them around. And so here it is. Um, and then uh, finally came back with the number. And then wow. got to submit all that to Guinness with all the verification. And, you know, for a while there, I was a little bit worried because when I sent it in to Guinness, well, number one, the videos were so many, it was so many hours of videos, the website couldn't even handle it anymore. So I actually had, a, it, it's actually the reason I even hold the YouTube channel was I had to open it to put all the verification videos for Guinness to see because their website couldn't upload any more of the videos. That's <laughs> so hilarious. So I put them all on YouTube, sent them the link and said, here guys, uh, go at it. Okay. And then I didn't hear anything for Guinness for about a month and I was mm -hmm. trying to scratch my head say okay what's happening uh, do I need to do anything until uh, I finally hear from them all of a sudden you got it <laughs> and uh, till this day I remember I was uh, at work in the middle of a meeting and all of a sudden some of my coworkers see me smiling and almost jumping up and down <laughs> in my chair and uh, they're like what's wrong with this guy and uh, mm -hmm. I get to call the family and share the news and so forth. It yeah, was fun. That's, it was fun. that's amazing, man. Um, yeah, congratulations. That's still like that's a huge deal. So Guinness came to film at your at your house. Uh, can you tell me about when they came to actually like you know promote uh, your collection? So because Guinness is a UK um, organization, actually I did all the media myself um, with the family. So he was my cameraman a couple times. And we would do the takes and send it to Guinness. You know, they say, yep, can you do this one, additional one and this? Um, and then we did have some local news um, broadcasters coming actually into the house with them. And they, they, they did a couple of the professional filming as well. Gotcha. That's, uh, that's awesome. Do you feel a little, a little bit more of like a celebrity after you won the, the record? Um, or do you feel just like... Not really. You know? I mean, I... I live my life normally ordinarily um my social media footprint is actually pretty small mm. um sometimes a little bit too much of a recluse it's just not looking for the attention per se um it's happened once or twice that folks have recognized me in public or something like that um that was funny <laughs> you're like oh but, well, hi <laughs> Uh, aren't you that guy is mainly in video game stores because those are typically oh, the guys yeah, that yeah. pay a little bit more attention so basically like every GameStop, every uh, video game section, <laughs> like Walmart, Target, people are like, hey. Well, I wouldn't go that far. More, a couple <laughs> GameStops, a couple other local game stores, yeah. And then, you know, sometimes when I tell people, um, I'll get this weird look like, yeah, I don't know. You, like, you don't look like right. a guy who plays <laughs> video games. You look the part, uh, yeah, it doesn't sound right. Okay, look it up. It's there That's, on the internet. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, 
Yeah, no, that's cool. That's pretty funny. Uh, yeah, I mean, do you want to give us a tour of your sure of your collection? Yeah, I'll I'll put you on the big screen here, and then you can kind of just. All right, I'm gonna rotate the camera here. Give me a second. Okay. Figure this yep. one out. All right, let me know when you can see it. I can see it. So what are we? Wow, okay. that is a lot so of games. I'll start over here. Um, this section over here has the Jaguar collection. Oh wow! I have a complete uh, U.S. Uh, North America in box Jaguar collection. Um, Sega 32X. Here you see the 3DS, and actually that's a collection I just completed here um, in the last couple of months. Uh, Atari Lynx. Um, and you got here all mingled up. Top couple rows are Genesis. Yeah. Then you got Sega CD and Saturn. All those complete collections. And they kind of wrap around Raw. Again, I've had to be creative with space because of limitations. Yeah. Um, Dreamcast collection there. Master System in that middle white row. Here have some Japanese Saturn games. The Saturn or Sega, uh, sorry, the Genesis collection goes all through there. Wow, Here I keep a couple of the drums and yeah. other stuff. Oh, you still got plenty of stuff. Yeah, well, I've been uh, hesitating to put shelves in there too, just uh, not to clutter it too much. Yeah, These yeah. bins is where I keep my Japanese stuff. Um, you can see the Guinness certificate there. Nice, nice. Um, accessories. Games all put in there. Okay, here we start going into oh my gosh, original Xbox, and this wall it, it wraps around. So top couple levels are original Xbox, then Xbox 360. Both of those are complete collections. You can start to see some of the PS4 towers here. Oh, yeah. Again, I've run out of space, so anywhere that I can fortunately stockpile, that's what it's at. Um, I'll rotate a little bit here. Sure, sure. Uh, okay, let me see. Actually, I'll jump to this side. I then show this side. So up there, you have a uh, GameCube collection. Oh, yeah. Complete GameCube collection. And a complete Wii collection down here as well. Wow. I didn't even know there were that many Wii games. Oh, there's a bunch of them. <laughs> huh. There's a bunch of them. Um, the Nintendo Switch has been kind of relic reliquated over here. Again, uh, space restrictions. Yeah, yeah. Give me a second, Mark. Sure, sure. Okay, up here is uh, Vita, 3DO, um, PS4, Wii U. Okay. Oh my! This wow. corridor is tight. Yes. Uh, again, I've used every creative space I could to put stuff in, and uh, yeah, yeah, I'm blocking myself out. You know, <laughs> unfortunately, I don't have the room to display it as beautifully as some other folks do. Um, but I have a practical where I can find any game I want in my collection. Yeah. No. It. It definitely. I can tell. It looks organized. You know. In. In like. It, it's definitely. Uh, in a, in a laid out in a way that I know you can find stuff. So, well, they're all sorted alphabetically and grouped by system. And again, I've tried to accommodate them as best I can. This whole wall here is all PS2, a complete collection as well. Wow. And it wraps through there. Up here, it's kind of hard to see, but here are some uh, a mirage of... Uh, PS4, Vitas, and a couple of PS2 items. These are some of the limited run stuff. Um, they're a little bit harder to find, and I try to keep them up there so my kids don't grab them. Ah, uh, okay. Um, PS3, complete collection as well. Here, I'll move over here. When, when, you, around when you say complete one. collection, does that also include, like, remastered versions or... Uh... Or is it just the first release title? The first release title of that. Um, if they released the same game, 
um, with more content on the disc, then I'll also buy it as part of that collection. Mm. But uh, I don't go after if it's just a DLC component that's a little paper up or just greatest hits types component. Yeah, I'm not that. I avoid those. Gotcha. gotcha. PSP against that wall there, hugged in there. Um, and it wraps around. It's kind of hard to see. Over here on this side, it's PlayStation 1s. And I am very close to getting a complete collection on that one. I'm 70 games away from having that as a complete collection. That's how the last are, or late I've been working on it. How are you checking to see what games you're still missing? Is there a database somewhere that you look at? Or how do you know? Yeah, I use a couple different online sources. And it's a little bit tricky to get um, to identify complete collection lists. Um, there's not, there's, it's hit and miss and finding good repositories that have those lists complete. So sometimes I have to go through and compare between a couple different lists and ultimately come up with what is the most complete list I got. Mm. And then it's just a matter of going through a process of elimination and tracking which ones I got. So gotcha. here, some Famicom games and some of those boxes, um, Xbox ones, more PS1 games. Xbox One stuff, Vita. Over here, this is that wall to wrap around, so you'll see more Xbox 360 stuff, Xbox One stuff. How tall are your ceilings, or how, how tall is the, uh, the room? They're about uh, nine feet tall. Okay. Wow. And then in here, is where I maintain some of my retro stuff. Oh, I was going to say, where's the Super Nintendo and Nintendo games? <laughs> yeah, they're, oh, they're wow. all here as I'm getting into this. Um, the Nintendo DS is another one I'm still working off. I got uh, around close to 1,200 games for the system. So I still got another five or 600 to go to have a complete collection of the original DS. Man. Um, here in these, you have Game Boy Color. Yeah. Uh, Neo Geo Pockets. The Nintendo 64 wraps around, so there's some there. There's some in the other spots. Some other retro stuff. Engage. You got a complete Engage collection as well. Let me see, jumping to this side. So here's some of the choices I made in collecting. Um, for example, Game Boy Advance games. All these, when you originally bought these, would be in, in paper boxes. Right. And getting those and maintaining those, you know, here's an example, a Game Boy Color one. They don't fare too well with age. And um, I just decided I didn't want to try to deal with the hassle of the boxes. They look great, believe me. But uh, I keep them all instead organized alphabetically by um, in those bins. Yeah, makes sense. Here's some more, here's where I keep a bunch of my systems or some of the collector edition stuff. Yeah. Um, just the boxed away. You can see some actually newer Xbox ones that I added to the collection. Mm -hmm. And then here's the side where you start to see more the Nintendo 64. Yeah, there it is. Super Nintendo, original Nintendo. Wow. Atari down there. <laughs> That's incredible. What are your what ask you your, any uh, game in particular you want to see? Ooh man. Um do you have a Pokemon Snap on uh, Nintendo 64? Pokemon Snap on Nintendo 64. Yeah. Let me try to find it here. Sure, sure. sure. D I Pokemon Puzzle League, getting close. There you go. Wow, that I, I'm gonna I'm gonna virtual clap. That was that's really <laughs> that's that's fantastic. Wow, ah, man, that is incredible. Yeah, that's. I am speechless, Antonio. I don't know. 
it's like I've seen pictures and I've seen videos, but it's like it's different when you actually, you know, you're actually in the room and you're looking at it. Um, how did you, did you, before you figured out your organizational system, like how were you storing your games? Were you just like piling them up in boxes or were they just like shoved against the wall? So this area I'm walking in that we're walking around, I'm showing you actually used to be my attic. Um, okay. So I used to have one of the other bedrooms in the house as my office. And originally I started putting my games in, uh, uh, in that office. Slowly it went into the closet, into that office. Then that closet got filled. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I just said, you know what, this is too much. I'm going to build or expand into this attic and convert it into a room. So I hired some contractors to come in and they transformed it. They did a pretty good job. Um, but actually, I, I was lucky because some of this geometry that they gave as far as how to access the room um, provided additional ways and better locations to store the games and to put them out. So that's the evolution into how I got into this room. Wow, that is that is crazy. Uh, does it get really warm in there sometimes, or is it pretty well ventilated? It has its own AC system dedicated into this. So it's uh, when I built this room, I built it with its own dedicated air conditioning system. That is that's impressive. Honestly, that's really those were all my questions. Um, is there anything you want to promote? Do you? How can people follow you? Reach you? Between work and family, um, I just don't have enough time for posting continuously on uh, YouTube or social media. I know I get requests quite often and uh, folks that try to reach out. Um, and then also, too, I've, I learned, unfortunately, early on as far as this, once the Guinness come out, there are some folks that are a little bit more unsavory in uh, the Internet. And um, for their own gain, they try to do harm to others. And... Mm -hmm. I've tried to stay private for a lot of it, but, um, you know, part of me keeps thinking to share a little bit more because there are, it, it drives a lot of positive folk or positive feedback as well. And people like to see this as well. So I don't mind sharing it. Hence why I agreed to, to do this video. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'll see if I can put up some contact information for folks if they want to see a little bit more. Again, uh, I've been trying to put more videos on, but it's just time is my enemy. No, I, I really appreciate you taking the time and, um, you know, willing to just kind of chat with me and show me a little bit about your, uh, your collection. It's, uh, it's a real honor, and uh, I'm, I'm very thankful that you uh, agreed to do this. So I appreciate it a lot. Well, happy to participate, and uh, I wish you and your viewers enjoyed it. Thank you. And, yeah, and please, if you ever... Uh, finish a collection, you know, uh, let me know and we'll, we'll catch up. <laughs> sure. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Antonio. I really appreciate it. And, and, All right. We'll do. All right. Take care. Take man. care, Mark. Bye. Bye.